Okay, so it's already created the ambient occlusion map, and I can hide and unhide that. All right, so 3D Coat is going to use that ambient occlusion map to drive the more in the lit and more in the shadow areas. So let's choose that more in lit. I'll zoom in a little bit. And again, I need to select a layer that's visible. Okay. More on shadow. Okay. And then you have more on top. Let me expand this a bit. And let's bring our contrast up. So where this comes into play most commonly in 3D Coat is with your PBR materials. As you know, in the real world, you have rust that typically settles where there's a lot of moisture condensation on metals and so it's typically going to reside on the upper portions of an object or maybe uh, paint having spilled onto an object. Okay, so let's try and bump up the contrast again. And I'll change this to standard so we can see it a little bit better. Now let's try on bottom. On the sides. And now we have some options here for more on bright, more mid-tone, more on dark. You need pixels on a given layer, maybe an area that you've already painted, that has these elements. So if you have an element that has nothing but a bright texture, Choosing more in mid-tones or dark is not going to help you much. So let me try and find something where I have a different range of tones. Let's try the eyes. Try more mid-tone. I'm going to hide that one layer. And let's go ahead and crank up our degree. Contrast. More bright, more dark, and then it's going to also give you an option for more on picked. Now this may seem like an odd one, but basically if you have, let's say, light values or light strokes of a given color, maybe you want to add a little more to it, then it's going to prefer this particular color as opposed to others. So let's go back to this other layer here. And if I choose more on picked, crank up the contrast. That's the only color I have here. But if I choose something else, let's say red tone, and now it doesn't have any of this color on that layer. It's mostly red. Okay, so now if I switch, all of a sudden you'll see it's preferring this color. Okay. And then the last two here are conditioned upon displacement map information. So if you've painted some bump detail on your displacement map, you can use that to restrict your painting onto the raised or bumped areas. Also, if you're in per pixel painting mode, whenever you are on any given layer and you have the depth channel enabled, whatever you paint in a depth channel 3D Coat will not only apply that to a normal map, but it also uses a displacement map under the hood 
So if you need to export displacement as well as a normal map, you can do so. And so in that sense, you can restrict your subsequent painting based on whatever you've sculpted or painted on your displacement maps. Okay, so just wanted to mention that. And the last thing I should mention is these conditional parameters or this menu list exists also in your PBR material editor. So let's pick one of these particular materials. Let me choose a different layer here. And I'll go back to always. Now, if I right click and choose PBR material editor, on any given layer, you can go to the right side with this degree slider and you'll see a drop list that contains the very same conditions. Same here with layer two, you can set it to a different one. Uh, copper, you can set it to something entirely different. So you have three completely different conditions being applied to this one material. Uh, for example, with copper, oftentimes you may have a little bit of oxidation going on. So you might use this top layer here for that. So yeah, that's a quick look at your conditional parameters menu list here in 3D Coat. And remember to always turn this off when you're done because many times you'll resume texture painting on a layer without intending for this to remain on and you'll wonder why it's not working anymore. And that's because your conditions are still active. Okay, so make sure to turn that off whenever you're done. Uh, just like turning off the lights when you leave the room. So hope you found it helpful. Thank you for watching. We will see you next time.